There are several ways to fetch data in Next.js. This depends on the type of page you are fetching data for and ultimately how you want the page to be rendered in Next.js. In this video, we are going to go through all the ways of rendering pages and how to fetch data for those methods. Also, as of February 2023, there is a newer version of Next.js that introduced newer methods of fetching data. So if you are using Next 13, feel free to jump to the following timestamp where we look at the newer implementations. Also, we are going to use the Fetch API a lot to fetch data. Fetch is a web API used to fetch remote data. It has an elegant API that returns promises and will also work without having to install any dependencies. Go check it out. There are two types of rendering that Next.js uses. There's pre-rendering where the React components are transformed to HTML before being sent to the client, which can be the browser. Pre-rendering includes server-side rendering and server-side generation. There is also client-side rendering where the client receives an empty HTML shell and then transforms the React components to HTML and finally updates the page HTML. In client-side rendering, we fetch the data after the component has rendered, ideally in a use effect hook. Let's say we want to create a component that displays the weather in a specific city, say New York, and we need to fetch this information via this third-party API service. We can use the fetch API to get this data in a use effect hook. We convert the response to JSON and then store the data returned in a local state variable. We can then display the results to the browser. If you view this component in the browser, you can see the div where we display the data is empty at first and then updates with the other HTML elements after the data is fetched. Most users don't want to see an empty screen while the data is loading, so we can show a loading indicator while you wait for the component to update. This is just one way to fetch data on the client side. Another method is by using the use SWR hook from the SWR npm package created by Next.js. SWR stands for Stale Well Revalidate, which is an HTTP cache validation strategy that works by returning stale data from the cache first and then sends the request to get the up-to-date data. So it shows stale data while revalidating. To convert our weather component to use SWR instead of use effect, we can first remove the use effect and use state code and replace it with the use SWR hook. The hook accepts two arguments, a key, which can be the URL of the API we are fetching, and a fetcher function, which is an async function that should fetch and return the data. Let's go ahead and create the fetcher function. So this is an async function with a URL argument. As I mentioned earlier, this URL prop is the key prop we set when initializing the hook. It's passed automatically to our fetcher function. We can then use the fetch API to call the URL and return the JSON response. The hook returns an object with three values. A data object, which is the value returned by the fetcher function, and is loading boolean and an error object in case our fetcher function fails. We can use the is loading boolean to display a loading message as the data is fetched. With that, we have recreated our initial use effect component to use SWR. Before we get it to server-side rendering, let's take a detour into a handy feature that Next.js provides, API routes. API routes allow you to build your own API right next to your pages. One application for them is hiding sensitive data like API keys or URLs from the user. With our current data fetching method, you can see the exact service you are using to fetch the data in the request tab of the browser dev tools. If it had API keys, we could be leaking it to everyone who checks in the network tab. We can proxy the request through an API routes request to hide the sensitive data. So we can create a weather API route in the pages API folder. API routes export an async function with request and response arguments that are automatically passed by Next.js. So we can do stuff like get the query parameters, for example the city parameters from the request object, and then use the value to call the real API. We then return the JSON response from the API via the response.json method. With that set, we can replace the API URL in our weather page with a value pointing to our API route with the city query parameter added to. With this, the real API URL is hidden from the browser network tab and we are safe from hackers. Let's now look into server-side rendering. With server-side rendering, the component HTML is generated in the server before being sent to the browser. This is the raw HTML without any interactivity like event listeners. The HTML is then sent to the client together with the data in JSON format that the client will need to set up interactivity for the components. After page loads in the browser, React will use the JSON data to initialize the components and make them interactive. 
This process is called hydration. The first method we look into is using get server side props. If you export get server side props function in your page, Next.js will automatically pre-render your page in the server using the data that this function returns. Let's go ahead and replace the client side fetching in this component over to get server side props. We first export the get server side props function and inside it we fetch the data and then return an object with a props key. This is required in order for the data in the props key to get passed to our component. In our case, we want to pass the data prop, so we set the data to the JSON value of our fetch response. We can then get the data prop in our component through object destructuring. We should also remove the loading indicator since we won't be needing it. If you load the page with your elements panel open, you'll notice a couple of things. First, all the HTML for the page is loaded at once. There's no waiting for the API request to complete before showing me the data. All of it is done before the page loads. Also, in the page HTML, you'll notice a script tag with next data ID. This contains the data that the API we call returns and is embedded with the page HTML to be used by React when hydrating the page. Another very cool thing about this that you may not have noticed at first is that the page can work without JavaScript. If we disable JavaScript in the browser and refresh the page, the page will still load with all of the data. This is very important for search engine optimization purposes if you want the page to be indexed by search engines like Google in the search results. Another important thing to highlight is that the get server side probes function will only run on the server and never on the client. This detail means that we can do server specific stuff like query databases and access file systems from this file. Let's try that out. Let's say we want the site visitors to be able to see the web for other cities instead of just this one city. We want them to be able to choose a city from a list of cities on the page fetched from the database. So I'm going to use an SQLite database for this. I've already set up the database and added a few utility functions in this file. Let me walk you through it in case you're interested. There's a function to create the database connection, another to create the cities table, another to seed the database with a few cities and another utility to get all cities. In our page, we can import the database connection and get cities utilities and then inside the get server side props function, initialize the database connection and get the cities. We then add the response to the props key in the returned object next to the data object. The cities prop is now available as a prop to our component and we can access it. We can then display the cities in a list by iterating through them. For the links, we want them to set the query string of the page with the value of the city name. We'll use the query string to fetch the data of the city dynamically. Here's how we'll do it. In the get server side props function, there's a query object that Next.js passes automatically to this function as part of the arguments. This object has all the query strings of the page. With this, we can get the city from this parameter and use it as the value of the city in the API request. We are setting a default value here because the query parameter can be empty and we don't want the details to be blank if it's not set. With that, we are dynamically generating the weather data by querying the database on the server if a user clicks on a different city. If you have been using Next.js for a long time, you may have noticed that get server side props works a bit similar to the get initial props function. They work similarly but have a major difference. Get server side props will only get called on the server while get initial props can get called both on the server and the client. So this means that you can't include server only code like file system access or database connections inside get initial props. Your page will crash. Let's test this. We can start by changing the function name from get server side props to get initial props. Now get initial props is attached a bit differently to the page. It's not just exported in the page and Next.js picks it up as you did before. I'm going to show you how it's done shortly. Let's first remove the export keyword from the function. Another section we need to change is the format of the return data. For get initial props, we just return the objects of the props we need to pass to the component directly. We don't need to pass it into the props key. Finally, we need to attach this function to the page so Next.js finds it. We do that by adding it to the exported component directly. So we add the get initial props property to the weather component. Let's now confirm if our page still works. Oh, and guess what? We are getting the file system specific errors in the browser thrown while the SQLite library tries to access our database file. So, get initial props just run our server only code in the browser. Let's try something else. We can remove all of our server specific code like the database connection stuff and even the imports. Since you are not returning cities anymore, we can just give it an empty array as the default value to prevent our app from crashing again. 
If we refresh the page, you can see that the error is now gone. We removed the server specific code and the function is now executed successfully on both the server and the browser. I hope that explains the difference between both functions for you. If you have any more questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section. The next section we are going to look into is server side generation, which is also called static site generation. Just like server side rendering, Next.js generates your page HTML on the server. The only difference being that the server side generation is done at build time when you're building your page with next build command right now every time the weather page is visited the server rebuilds the page and it's a bit of a slow process because you have to wait for the api and database query to complete before you can see the weather so how do we speed this up first we want to move the weather info from each city to their own page so if a user visits weather stroke tokyo page for example they'll see the tokyo weather same for weather stroke nairobi route and so forth enter dynamic routes dynamic routes are page routes that allow you to add custom parameters to your urls for example the city specific weather pages i described earlier have something in common they both start with weather followed by the city name so the city name is dynamic in next.js the dynamic route is a file name represented as the parameter enclosed in brackets so in our case the parameter name is the city enclosed in brackets let's create this route by adding it inside the weather folder Inside the file, we can add the boilerplate we were using to display the city data before. From this, you can see that we need to pass two props to the city weather component, the city and the weather data. For static site generation to work, our dynamic route needs to export two functions, a get static paths function and a get static props function. Get static paths is an async function that returns paths to all the parameters that this dynamic route supports. In our case, it needs to return paths to all the cities in our database. So what we need to do in this function is get all the cities and return an object with a paths key which is an array of objects containing a params key and a city parameter whose value is the city slug. The city key is used here because that's what we call the parameter name when we created the file. They need to match. There is also a required fallback property that must be returned by this function. This property helps Next.js decide how to behave whenever a path that was not there initially when it was building the pages appears. If fallback is true, the next JS will attempt to generate the page in the background by calling get static props with that new city as params and then build the component HTML. If fallback is false, the next JS will show a 404 not found error message, meaning it won't attempt to generate the page for the new parameter. If fallback is blocking, the next JS will build the new page by calling get static props and then show the HTML to the user. It will block rendering the page until it is fully built. For our case, we don't expect the cities to change so we'll set fallback to false the get static props function is also an async function that should return the props that the page needs to render this function will run for each of the paths that get static paths returns each time receiving the params object as a parameter so we'll get access to the city slug and use it to get the weather data for it one of the constraints of the api we used is we need the full city name in order to get its weather we only have the slug we can extend our database utilities to add a function that when given a slug will get the full city object from the database we can then use it in our get static props function to get the city and then the name property which we will use for the api we can then return the city and the data as part of the props key this will be passed to the component there is also an optional revalidate property that can be added to the returned get static props object next.js allows you to update your static files after they have been built without rerunning the build this is called incremental static regeneration when we set this value to 10 we are telling next.js to regenerate the page every 10 seconds after the request is made. So if a user visits the page before the 10 second window is over, a cached page is shown to them. If they visit after the 10 second window, the next JS will still show them the cached page but will start to rebuild the page in the background. If the build succeeds, next JS will update the page with the up to date data. This means even if you change some of the values in the database after build, next JS will pick them up without you needing to rebuild the whole site. We won't need this for our site, so we'll not set it. Our dynamic page is now done. We can remove all the API data fetching logic from the main page since you don't need it anymore. All we need to do is fetch the list of cities and display them with links to the individual auto-generated pages. The home page now shows us a list of cities and if you click on them, it loads the individual city pages. Since you are testing this on the local dev server, we can't really see much difference on loading speed as we haven't built our app. Let's do so by running npm run build. 
After the build is done, you'll notice that all the built pages are printed out for you. We can even see all the individual weather pages for our dynamic pages and see how long they took to build. We can then start our app with npm start instead of npm run dev. When we visit the weather page and individual city pages, you'll notice that the pages load way faster and there's no waiting for data to load. Next.js 13 is a completely revamped version of Next.js. They introduced a new app folder that is powered by React server components where you can write components that run only on the server or only on the client if you want. With the new app directory, all previous data fetching methods like get server side props, get static props, or get initial props are no longer supported. They have been replaced with a new data fetching API built on top of the fetch web API. The extended fetch API has additional capabilities like caching and automatic request deduping. Let's try to move this weather page into the app dish and see how much work it takes. Pages in the app directory work a little differently. The routing is folder based instead of file based. So to create a new weather route, we add a weather to stock page.js file. The folder name is the root and the file name is the component. We use weather to name to avoid conflicts with the original weather route in the pages directory we created before. We can just copy over the whole component from the old weather file into this new file and update it to fit the new way of doing things. A server component just needs a data fetching function. We can change the function name to get data, remove the export keyword, and just return the data directly instead of an object. So this is now just a normal data fetching function. To use it in our component, get this, we just call it inside the component. Well, after making the component a sync and we are done, checking back in the browser and visiting the weather to root, it works just like the old one. The next data script tag with JSON data has been replaced by a bunch of other script tags with JavaScript functions that have the data embedded in them. The next page you're going to try and move over to the app directory is the dynamic city page. So we create the page inside the app folder at weather2 stock city stock page.js. Note that the bracket parameter syntax hasn't changed, only that it's now in a folder instead of a file. We can then copy over the code to this file and update to match the new API. The first thing we need to change is the function name for getting dynamic parameters. We change it to get static params from get static paths. Also, the format of the return data has been simplified to just an array of objects with the parameter key and the parameter value. The get server side props function has been removed, so we can refactor this one into a get data function that returns an object to the city and data values. We can then turn our component into an async function and call the get data function with the params passed into our component. You might have noticed that the params from get static params are passed into the component directly and it's up to us to pass them over to the get data function. With that, our component is a valid server component that uses dynamic routes. Client-side fetching is largely unaffected by the new API. You can still fetch data in a use effect hook if you want or use a library like SWR or React Query to manage your requests. It's important to note that the app directory is still in early beta and not yet recommended for production. These new features will make data fetching a lot simpler once they are production ready, so it's important to play with them now and get an early understanding of them. I think this pretty much covers all the data fetching methods in Next.js. If you notice I missed something, please add a comment below and I'll revisit it. Thanks so much for watching and please remember to subscribe for more videos like this.